So this is the exhaust manifold that's in that car. The turbo that hangs off of it weighs about 47 pounds. Not only that, I'm trying to push 33 p PSI of boost through that motor, which is a lot of thermal stress on this manifold. Also the weight is really not helping things. So little cracks have started to form in the manifold. I'm not sure if you're able to see this because I got such a wide angle lens and oh yeah, maybe a little bit. Just bad, you don't want cracks in your manifold. So to get rid of this, I am going to be building a manifold out of stainless steel elbows like this. The main roadblock with building one of these is how do you cut these angles down the elbow so you can piece them all together in kind of like a, a Lego style build and get the cuts perfectly square to the square to the ax, the bend axis. In order to do that, you need to build a little jig for the saw. The jig I'm going to be making is out of this block. What I'm going to be doing first though is trying to slice this down the middle because I'm cheap. <laughs> After we get that done, I'm going to be machining the profile into the side of the block, kind of like this, so that I'm able to sneak it out just a little bit, clamp the two pieces together around this, and then the saw will cut perfectly, perfectly straight. And I'll be able to cut off little pie slices or in half or at 12 degrees or whatever, whatever degrees I need this block is gonna hold it straight in that saw. Now, I've been working on this for, I don't know, a couple days off and on as I do other things because the 3D printer takes, I don't know, about an hour and a half per two little sections. So I'm gonna be 3D printing here for a, probably the next couple days. I need to machine out a flange out of this piece of 304 stainless that I have. I need one for the turbo and one for the actual exhaust manifold. So I'll just be, you know, in Fusion 360. I'll be modeling this flange surface and then taking this piece, putting it in the mill and milling it all out. Um, the plan is to make nice little transitions for where the exhaust ports are and they'll transition from kind of an oval up into a circle. And then I'm gonna put a little lip. I don't really like doing socket welds, like where you do a lip and you fit it inside because they can crack due to the expansion. So that you kind of need to like offset them a little bit. What I'm gonna be doing instead is just uh, doing a little lip now. I also have a whole ton of elbows ready to go. I've also got my my straight piece of tube. So I'm pretty much ready to go on this thing. Anyways, let's, uh, let's try and cut this bitch in half now. So I finished cutting these on the bandsaw. I eyeballed it. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It was pretty close. So I'm gonna put it in the vise. I'm gonna surface, fly cut all the sides, get it nice and square, because I'm not really checking for square. It's just as square as I can get in the machine. I just spent a hell of a long time this morning and today cleaning out, well, I cleaned out the coolant tank and dropped out the coolant at the eco center. I was fortunate they took it for free because they're like, oh, you seem commercial with 200 liters of coolant. And it's like, you know, some people are just crazy and they have a Haas that has a couple hundred liters in the garage like me. It's personal. I got brand new coolant. I wiped everything down, new coolant in there. So I'm gonna get it set up, maybe a tool in there. I'm gonna get the fly cutter. Oh, it was a dead battery making it so shitty. 60 foot pounds on this guy, cause I don't know, that's what I think the max was and why wouldn't you just go to the max? Okay. 
Okay, so now that these are all nice and fly cut and deburred, ready to go. I mean, they're nice, beautiful little pieces again. That fly cutter does such a good job and feeds and speeds are just right to get nice, nice finishes. So I got a new one in there, ready to go. And uh, I also put them together when I fly cut these sides so that they're all, so that they're both the same shape. Um, I took a lot of attention and care to make sure that they were leveled. Um, so the plan is going to be now to cut the profile of the elbow in the soft jaw so that it fits inside like that. So I can clamp it in the saw and do my cuts. First, I got to probe this in to see where it is. So I'm going to take the digital probe, hit it on all sides with it. That'll store it in the machine where it is. Then I'll come down with the tools and I'll use the tool setter to tell me exactly the length of the tools. That goes in the machine as well. And then I'm gonna do a dry run, which is gonna take about half an hour, uh, just to make sure I got no funny pass in there and that it's not gonna fail halfway through or something stupid. So this is the, uh, the ultimate test here. I'm gonna put the elbow into it. Ooh, damn! Half a clap here, but that's not going anywhere. I don't care who we are. So I think you can see the plan now. So I'll, like, I'll push it out like that and bandsaw. Right across there, there, wherever we need. Wherever we need. So tight. Woo! See? Double. So then what happens is I put it into the band saw, it'll clamp like this, top down view, and the saw blade will come down and slice it off right here. Do I have anything pointy? Or pretend this is the saw blade. So then the saw blade will come down and it will cut right through there. What that allows me to do is as I'm setting up the manifold, I'll use the 3D printed pieces to kind of put it together with Lego and then those 3D printed pieces will tell me exactly the angle that I need to set this at and then I can cut the pipe pieces to the exact degrees that I need. Just pull it out a little slice. If I just need a little slice, slice. But this jig just came out so beautifully. Now that I have a way to clamp all the elbows into the bandsaw, I needed a way to cut this pipe for the merge. So to do the merge collector, I cut off little pieces. I think it was 3.4 inches long. And then once I have those, oh, it's all dirty. It's all dirty, Lucas! Then I needed a way to cut the straight pieces because I needed to cut at an angle on this pipe like this. And everything that was out there, they, that has a jig for holding these in the band saw. It's like 350 American. What I did is I designed and then machined out this little jig. And so how this one works is it gets clamped in the saw like that. And then the blade comes down like this. So that allows me to set the angle of the pipe where the blade's gonna come down. Then I need to rotate the pipe inside of here. So then on this piece, I put little indicator marks all the way around. So then I can take the pipe and rotate it in place. And then on the top of this piece, I also have indicator marks. It allows this top piece to rotate in place. So that gives me two planes of rotation, which is all you need to cut collectors because you always want your cuts axial al axially aligned. There's a lot of angles going on there. This is the right way to do it. This is really easy to make. It clamps so good. It just the one bolt, goes down, clamps it tight. Then the other two bolts allow you to rotate. And then all you do is rotate, 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 and cut, cut, cut. 
And then you end up with a collector. I kind of skipped over some steps because I was really excited to just get welding. These are the collectors that I cut on this jig. And as you can see from the inside, it actually went really, really good. Um, the only real drawback of my jig, which I think is just the bandsaw itself, is as it cuts down, so as you're cutting, like say you're cutting down like this, and you're just gonna cut off this little corner to get a piece like this. Then, because of this angle, the saw blade does tend to wander, the cutting edge tends to wander down a little bit, and I found it to be two degrees by the end. So I think if I just had, inset the cut a little bit two degrees so as it comes down that deflection moves into the cut and actually ends up straight i do that for round two because round one as you can see went pretty good this is my first time welding stainless ever um, i'm told i'm going too hot and i don't have gas but as you can see from the inside i got really good penetration all the way around so i'm not too worried about it leaking um, time will tell it'll crack. This is prototype base, so we're not really too worried about that. We just got to get to the results so we can move on to the patenting. Um, after I had welded it up, I did cut these all at the proper angles, but like I said, because of everything wandering and me kind of rushing through things, it didn't quite work out the way I wanted. In the end, I ended up putting the whole collector in the bandsaw and just slicing off just a sliver to get a perfectly flat bottom because I also machined this flange out of stainless steel. And as you can see, this is my first time trying 3D surfacing and also my first time doing a two-sided op where everything has to match. And I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Actually, everything is very, very aligned. The only issue I had was my in-position accuracy of the machine was set at 50 thou and it should have been set at like 2 thou. So it kind of came in a little hot on some of the corners and ended up digging in a little bit, but it's fine, honestly, for a collector. The collector, after welded up, mates pretty close. It came out really good. I'm gonna be able to blend this, no problem. I'm about to start welding on The only issue I had, which I had on the previous manifold, is where the bolt holes come down to secure it to the turbo. They get really close to this manifold and you can't actually get them in because they they hit against it. It's just too tight. So I had to just die grind out that edge a little bit so that they go in without a problem. Now they don't go in straight and this is the problem I had on the other manifold as well is you have to put the bolts all through all four holes and then bring the turbo up because you can't have the turbo in tight and try and get them straight down. You kind of get it. So right now what's going to happen is I'm going to align this to the flange. I'm going to tack it all up. This, this weld is actually super important. I should have back purged these ones. I was just more excited to get into the stainless welding. Hey, right, before I went to the next op, I thought I'd show you this, the manifold. So what I do is I take the drill bits, drill all the holes, then I take this, then I take this guy, my 3 8 flat end mill and rough out in here and then once i do that i take the ball mill and come down and i make these edges nice and smooth oh it's pretty dark in there so now what's going to happen is i'll take this flange and i'll flip it the other way indicate out again and then i'll cut the other side all right so i just finished cutting the flange I gotta tell you, she's looking pretty good. So I use these little tabs, and it works really, really good. The cutter goes all the way through, and then just up, over, and leaves those tabs. So then when I take it out, I just flip it, and just zip cut all those all the way along. All right, so now I've got all the tabs cut off, and smoothed out, and I did a test fit on the motor, and I had to trim this corner because the power steering bracket's there. Um, but it did slide right on. So the reason why I made this is because I have to go from this oval port to a round pipe. In order to do that, you need like smooth transitions. So the flow kind of changes shape and direction smoothly because abrupt changes rob you of pressure and flow. 
So I created this guy. Um, it did slide onto the motor really good. I'm super happy with how all the transitions came out. And then I have this guy. This is my welding um, plate or jig or whatever you'd want to call it. So all the bolt holes are there. So I can bolt it down nice and tight, less deflection from welding. Each one of these has a backflow port just like this one. So this one is the turbo side of things. Same thing, it's all nice and transitioned in. But yeah, so it'll bolt like that. Um, and I'll probably have it like around here somewhere. And then what'll happen is I'll run each of the pipes out. I'll break off all the individual runners after I have them all mocked up. And then I'll weld them out. And then I'll fit them back in, weld everything out completely, take all the bolts out, which then allows this guy to slide out. So that concludes all the prep work to get ready to do this exhaust manifold. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to actually be cutting the pipes and fitting everything together now that I have all the flanges ready to go and all my cutting jigs. And I already have this merge collector all welded out already too. Just like that. Weld this guy out. Lots of parts. I'm pretty excited. I've never built one of these before. A lot of prep work to get it. Oh, these are back purge ports too. Super important to get a nice strong weld. I hear, I've never done this. Anyways, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. See ya.